All right, for those of you who have just joined us on the Photoshop portion, please make sure that you are looking over the slideshow that accompanies this video and make sure that you are watching the first um, 15 or so minutes of the live session from the previous video because we went over a lot of different announcements and I did go over a rundown of the assignment. So as I was saying, I am going to be doing a little bit different of a composition. I'm not going to do the same exact thing that you guys are doing. And the reason why is I don't, sometimes I feel like if you see something it's hard not to follow exactly along and do the same exact thing. So, you know, it's like once it's seen, it can't be unseen. So I'm going to, I use four different types of images. I do have a background. Um, I have another um, celestial background. I have this fancy horse and then I have some planets here. So I'm going to combine these four images and I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques other than the ones that are in the two videos that you're going to be watching just so that way you have you know you can watch those videos follow along with those techniques um, and then I kind of wanted to just show you a different way as well to give you a couple of different options of how to composite these images together. So that way you'll have kind of a well-rounded understanding of doing this between all of the different videos that you can watch. It kind of gives you a whole range of techniques that you can use. So I'm gonna start off by opening up my background. And I'm gonna work outside of my background file, but I want to save it as a different file name. So in case if I mess anything up, I can, I know that I still have my original, so I'm going to immediately do a file save as, and I'm going to name it the correct naming convention for my assignment, which is DES 104 S McNamara, let's spell my name right, week three assignment. And I'm going to name this as a PSD file, which is Photoshop, and save. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because um, I know that I'm going to be working in multiple layers, so I might as well just name it as a Photoshop file right off, right off the bat. All right, and I don't believe it the assignment tells you what type of a file to upload I just want to double check this so you aren't given a file type to upload I would like to see your PSD files your Photoshop documents so that way I can see each of the four layers that you're working with and I can see how you have put it together so please upload your Photoshop document when you are uploading this assignment don't upload the JPEG I mean if you want to do both if you want to upload a flattened JPEG version along with your Photoshop file that's okay but if you upload me just a JPEG, I'm going to send it back to you and ask for your PSD file. So make sure that you're saving those native files. All right, so the next thing I'm going to open up is, um, I'm gonna work with, I'm gonna work with the background first, the Galaxy background. So let me open that up. Whoops, wrong one. We have two galaxy backgrounds going on here. This one. All right. And I'm going to drag this background onto this file. So to do that, I need to tile these or arrange these to be tiled vertically. Whoops. There we go. So window, arrange, tile all vertically. And then what I can do is I can just drag this one on top of this one and close that out. And. This image seems to be a lot bigger than my background image. So I'm gonna hold down shift. I'm gonna 
scale this down. And the way I, I did that is I hit Command T, which is transform, or I can do edit, transform. I can do scale, or I can do a free transform. I like to do a free transform, and you need to hold down shift, so that way it scales proportionally, but you can also lock your width and height, and then you don't have to hold down shift. And I'm just gonna close this up to be the same width as this image. See if I can get it to snap right to the edge. And uh, I can move that around after and I'll hit enter. And I'm going to make my background layer a non-flattened background layer. So I double clicked on it. I'm just going to have it be layer zero, but I'm still going to name it background because I want to make sure that I know what my layers are. And I'm going to double click on this one where the name is, and instead of layer one, I'm gonna call this um, celestial. I think I spelled that wrong, but celestial. It's okay. And I'm going to drag this underneath my background because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip out all of this blue sky so that way my celestial background shows through and it's gonna be this kind of crazy, Dud earthly looking, you know, um, back, you know, sky. So how I'm going to do this, which is a little bit different than I think they show you in the videos, is I am going to use Quick Mask. I love using Quick Mask. Not a lot of people do. So I have used this in the past. I think I showed you how to do this in week one. I don't remember if I did it in week two as well. So your quick mask button is, is located all the way down here. Underneath your two um, color squares, it's, um, it's this square with a circle with dots in the middle. And this is you edit in quick mask mode. So I'm going to click on that and you'll notice that it kind of changes the square to be gray with a black circle in the middle. And what you do is you just paint what you want to select. And whichever background or whichever layer you have selected, see how it turns it red? That's the layer that will be your selection will occur to. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to just paint all of the blue um, of the sky. So I want to turn off and you'll notice this when you zoom in, Photoshop does this thing called extras where it adds this kind of graph in and some people like using it. I find it very distracting. So if you go to view, you can turn that off under extras and it will get rid of that. And then all I'm going to use is the paint brush tool, which is B or um, brush. Where is it? Here you are. And I'm going to make this brush a little bit smaller. And I'm going to leave the hardness. I don't want a really, really hard line because I, it's not going to be exact. So I'm probably going to leave it around like 76%, maybe four. And you need to paint in black ink. So make sure if, if it's not on black, like if you already had some color selected, if you click on the default foreground background, it'll bring it back to black for you. You need to paint in black. And just gonna go in, I'm gonna paint out all of the blue of the sky. And I'm paying particular, um, you know, I'm really zoomed in and I'm really paying attention to the different pixels. You'll notice I'm really kind of getting in there and I'm leaving some of the shadows in. But I want to make sure that I don't have any like hazing going on, which is when, you know, some of the pixels start to shine through from the original and I'll kind of get like a blue haze from the sky. I really don't want that. So I need to be, I really need to pay attention 
to how I'm painting in my selection here. And again, if I um, started painting in 50, let's say like 50% black, so gray, ultimately, what that would do is it wouldn't select the entire background. It would only select about half of the background. So it would remove about half of the blue. It would make it like 50% opacity, but I want to remove it completely. So that's why I'm using 100% black to paint. And it shows you red, honestly, just because it's a color that shows up a lot easier. So it's easier to see what you've already selected because it's kind of this, you know, really, really bright magenta e red that it paints in. And this is, you know, doing a composition like this is, is it's really detailed work. It, 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 you know, it takes a while to get it right. But if you put the time and the effort in, it comes out really cool. So it, it's definitely worth taking the time and doing something like really awesome because this is in the long run, this is going to be like a really good um, portfolio piece to show off your Photoshop skills. Plus, like I said, I find doing stuff like this, this is fun. This is the fun stuff. You know, this is the whole reason that you get into, you know, doing art and graphic design is to do creative projects like this. Fun, fun, creative projects. So I say when you have the fun projects, take them, uh, you know, take them where the, the getting's good. And while I'm painting away, you know, I'll, I'll start to talk about winter break a bit. If you ha are behind on any work, um, please, you know, take the time during our winter break. We have, what, almost two weeks off to really, you know, catch yourself up. Um, there's no reason that anyone can't catch up with a two week break that we're having. So please make sure that you're going in, you're getting those assignments submitted that might be late. Um, you can go and fix any submissions that you've already submitted that might have been done incorrectly for a higher grade. Really make the most of your time during this break to catch up if you need to. And if you're all caught up, you know, maybe get started by watching the videos for week four so you're a little bit ahead of the game. Um, you can start to, to work on your assignment for week four, you know, try to see if you can, if you can kind of figure it out on your own. Um, and then, you know, anything that might need to be fixed, you'll, you'll see after watching the live session. But, um, you know, d take the time to, to get yourself really set up, you know, going into the end of this mod, the last week of this mod. You know, this is one of those mods where you, you know, you get a break, which means that you can, you know, you can really get yourself caught up. You can really get yourself into a good position going into the new year. You know, definitely start off, start off 2018 on the right foot. You know, remember why it is that you're here, why it is that you've decided to, you know, take this program and to kind of take this graphic design journey and, um, you know, uh, do some extra projects, you know, try to try to make a couple of extra pieces that, you know, you can put into your portfolio. Um, you know, the way to get better at Photoshop is by using the program. Believe me, I didn't, I didn't learn or, you know, end up with the skill set that I have in Photoshop in four weeks. Um, you know, it takes time. It takes dedication. You got to just, you got to keep working at it. And the way I stay up to date in all of these programs is even if I don't have something that I need to do in Photoshop, I 
I give myself a project to do. It keeps my skills honed in the program, you know, keeps me at the top of my game in the program. So I, I definitely suggest that. Don't just take this course and then, you know, when this, these four weeks are done, be like, all right, well, then we're Photoshop because you're going to use Photoshop probably, if not every day, every week in your career. I, you know, this program just goes hand in hand with everything that you will do in graphic design. So you really, really need to be familiar with it. You need to be comfortable in the program. And the only way you're going to be comfortable and be familiar in it is by using it. Um, you know, I had a job working as the Photoshop expert for Benjamin Moore the paint company. And I felt that I was, you know, really good at Photoshop. I mean, I got, I got hired, you know, for that job before I started there. But some of the projects that I ended up doing while I worked there just brought my skills to a whole other level that I wouldn't have even thought about before I started doing some of those projects that I worked on. And, you know, it's, it's, it's things like that, you know, when you just keep pushing yourself and pushing yourself to, to be better and to try new things that you end up, you know, really surprising yourself sometimes in, in these programs. Um, you know, my husband, he's a graphic designer and he's completely self-taught in Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. Um, he does some 3D and, you know, he just sat down one day, you know, 30 years ago, basically, and decided that he was going to learn Photoshop. And, you know, then he decided he was going to learn Illustrator and then, you know, InDesign came came out and he learned that. And then one day he told me, I think I'm going to learn to do 3D and I'm going to learn this program called Maya. And I hadn't even heard of it. And he sat down over a weekend and made, you know, like his very first 3D animation. And I was like, all righty then. And some people, you know, they just pick up programs like that. I'm not one of those people. The, the way that I learn is through repetition by doing things over and over and over again. It, you know, that's just, that's how I learn. And I learn from taking classes. So, you know, that's kind of why I teach because that's, you know, that's always been my way of learning. And I try to teach my students the same exact way that I learned. Because, you know, I, there were some classes I took that I found really, really challenging, but I did really well in, and it was because of the way the, the teacher taught the classes. And then there were other classes that I took where I found them really challenging, and I walked away with an A, but I didn't walk away really feeling like I really knew what I was doing, and that's because I didn't feel that the teacher did a good job you know, explaining, explaining what it was. I just feel like I kind of fumbled along through the class. So uh, that's why I do a lot of demonstrations, um, you know, in my classes is, you know, I, we're all visual people. That's kind of what drove us to doing design in the first place. You know, we, we, we learn better visually by seeing rather than reading about it. So, you know, what is a better way to kind of teach how to do something than to teach it visually and have somebody watch you do it? Um, you know, that's also why a lot of these courses, you know, have the YouTube videos and have the other videos. It's because, you know, they know that our students are visual learners and, aren't going to get the same out of their education, you know, in reading about it in a book. All right, so, whew, all that to do this. I'm going to show you how to do a really big area, and then I'll go back to doing the, the real, the real nitty-gritty detail, at least we have some time. So let me, whew, let me zoom in on this. Should probably pick day image that didn't have as many 
branches, I guess. I could take some of them out, but I think it'll look really cool with the branches in here. So kind of going to go a little bit quick here. I'm holding down shift and then I can make that straight line to connect my brush strokes. Do, do, do. And this is kind of along the lines of what I used to do all day for Benjamin Moore, but um, I wasn't able to talk to anybody really while I was doing it, you know, because I, I worked with a whole bunch of coders and I've done coding as well. And I understand that, you know, you kind of need some, some silence while you're doing that. So I used to, I used to listen to movies at my desk a lot when I did really complex Photoshop work. I would put on, there's a website and it's called listen to a movie.com. And I'm one of those people where if I've seen the movie enough times, I can kind of visualize it in my head. So I used to sit at my desk and just kind of play over my headphones different movies that I'd seen. So that way, you know, kind of made the time go during the day while I sat here looking at pixels all day long. Oof. Fill this in. You'll notice I'm kind of just going around quickly. I'm going to get rid of that one. These leaves. I'm going to take out all the clouds. I'm going to go right to the edge. And right down to this edge. Zoom in. I'm going to follow the line of, I think it's probably mountains here. I'm just kind of following the slight, slight differences in the color. And this would actually be a good example of going back in afterwards and hitting this right here with maybe my 50% um, gray. Probably do that. So it kind of shows through. Not really. Again, I'm holding down shift, which is why I'm making these lines really quick. And I'm going to follow the line of the tree up. Now, if you feel that you're really good with the pen tool, you could also use the pen tool to make these selections. It's just, I have a lot of branches, so that would be a whole lot of, um, you know, line work with the pen tool, but it could definitely be done. I just think it's a little bit quicker to use the um, quick mask and paint it in myself. Yeah, I just want to make sure I don't have that haze. Can always take it out after. So many branches on this tree. Good thing I did this first. A 
There we go. And another thing I could do here is I could actually paint in this whole selection. And then I could also go back in and erase if I wanted to some of these branches. So, you know, if you find yourself in, um, you know, with a background kind of like this and you're like, oh, going around this, it'd be so much easier if I could just erase it. You can do that as well. You know, you could just paint over it and then erase out the branches instead. I'll kind of show you real quick. Like if I did this and then put on my eraser tool, which is right here. Oops. And then just went in and kind of followed. You know, that's that's another option for you. It's kind of everything in Photoshop, I find, you know, there's kind of 10 different ways that you can do it, you know, whichever ends up kind of working out the best for you, as long as, you know, we kind of end up in the same place at the end, you know, I'm okay with us taking a little bit of a different journey to get there. <laughs> And again, you know, you might think I'm crazy for thinking that this is fun. I find this, you know, maybe not so much when I'm talking while I'm doing it, but, you know, if I'm listening to music or like I said, if I, if I put a movie on in the background, I find Photoshop like this, work like this, really relaxing. There's something about watching, you know, the pixels color in and, you know, creating something and, you know, everything in design is problem solving in a way. And, you know, I really enjoy the whole problem solving aspect of it. So I find it kind of really cathartic to sit here and, and do this. It's very relaxing. A little zen in a way. <laughs> Ooh. All right, so to make my point, I'll just do this. Let's come back in and get this after. And connect it. All right. So I'm going to use the magic wand tool. I'm going to select right in here. But because I didn't have my brush set um, to 100% hardness, it's not going to fill in. So I need to expand my selection. So I'm going to go to select, modify, expand, and I'm going to expand it by uh, two pixels. It brings it in, see, two, two pixels worth. And then I'm going to do an edit, fill foreground color or black, hit OK, and then I'm going to deselect it, and zoom out, and I filled in that whole area. So anywhere, if I just kind of draw around and then fill it on the inside, I don't have to sit there and, you know, manually fill it in with my brush, which is good. Um, so you can do large areas that way. And let me do, let me do this real quick. I'm going to exit quick mask real quick and look at my selection. And you'll notice it selects the inverse of what I've painted. So I want to go up and I want to select, you know, have the selection box right now show me the, um, the sky being selected. So I'm going to go select inverse. And now this is what I painted. And I'm going to kind of fudge it a little right now. Holding down, going to my magic wand with this still selected. You'll notice my marching ants. I'm going to hold down shift 
and I'm going to add to the selection. And I'm going to have to go back in and clean this up, but this will make this go a little bit faster. And then what I can do is I can select um, a color range. I want to select this color range and hit OK. Eh, no, that didn't do it. You can select similar, see how that goes. That's a little bit better. I can see where I'm going to have to clean it up a little. Let me zoom out. But that kind of took care of a whole lot of that. So what I'm going to do again now is I'm going to select the inverse one more time. And I'm going to turn quick mass mode back on. And I can go in and I can now just paint in or erase the areas that are missing. So I can kind of do this a little bit more quickly now. And this will work in some instances, but there are going to be other instances where it just doesn't work and you're going to have to go in there and paint it in. Again, I'm going to erase out parts and my quick, I'm going to use some quick keys for this. So E is my eraser tool and B is my brush tool. And that's how I'm flipping back and forth. It's just easier than going back and forth to the panel. So once you start to learn those quick keys, you'll find that things will go in a, a little bit faster for you. All right, turn off those extras view. For some reason, if it, it doesn't remember that you've done it, it kind of drives me nuts. I'm just going to go up and down the picture, kind of. Cleaning it up a little. So you can see how long it would have definitely taken me to sit here and do this whole thing with the brush. Not that it can't be done. Just, you know, I don't want my entire demo to be me sitting here painting. All coming along. Almost done. I'm just going to do right up here and then we'll call it a day. So I'm going to exit quick mask. I'm going to do it really quick by exiting quick mask. And getting it with my magic wand. There we 
right now. And we have to erase a couple of areas down here. There we go. And this should be pretty good to kind of show you my, you know, for our demo. So you can kind of get an idea of what we're doing here. Really don't want to have a lot of jagged edges though. You'll end up ruining your picture in the long run. That's why, I, you know, attention to detail is really key with a, with a assignment like this. And I'm going to erase down here. I'm going to make it, uh, oh, it is fuzzy. All right. Kind of want to give it a, kind of a blur, a blurred edge where the mountains are, where the sky is going to meet. And I want it to be this harsh, horizon line. All right, which kind of gives it the 50% I was looking for. Maybe I'll paint in this. Um, they're gray. Whoops. Mm. Oh, all right. I know how I'll do it. Hold on. I paint it in and I'm going to erase it at 50%. That should give me the same kind of desired effect. All right. And exit quick mask mode. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a mask. Because again, I don't want to delete out that information. Like if I hit delete, the information is gone. So I'm going to add a layer mask. So after I've exited quick mask mode, I'm going to click on the layer mask button. And once I do that, it deletes out everything that I have painted. But you'll notice the original image is right here. This is my mask on top of it and anything that's black in my mask is what is showing you know gets shown through so i can click on the mask and i can paint to get rid of see with the black any of the blue that's still shining through if it's if it's distracting so i can add right to my mask and if something is um needs to come through, I can hit white and paint it back in. So, whoops. That's pretty good. You know, I probably, if I was really taking time, I would get this into it, view. And I would start to remove just, you know, this subtle um, blue showing through because it's kind of distracting. It's kind of like a haze of the original image. I would go through and I would, you know, do this for all around the entire tree because you can already start to see that, you know, it, it, 
it's kind of fading into the background now. Uh, you know, it, it, the coloring really works together too. I wasn't quite sure how it would work, but the coloring definitely, um, you know, definitely works together, which is pretty cool. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna add is I'm going to add in the, um, let's add the horse next. So I've got this majestic horse and I've got um, light coming in from this way. And on my horse, the light is coming in this way. So I'm gonna need to flip the horse when I add them in here because I wanna make sure that my light source is coming from the same exact area. Otherwise, it's gonna look really off. So you need to kind of be aware of where your light source is coming from. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do window arrange, tile all vertically. I'm gonna drag my horse in, my move tool. And close it and I'm gonna scale him down so I'm gonna do edit tra free transform and I'll zoom out command minus zooms me out and I'm gonna lock my width and height so that way he's proportional and And keep them kind of big in the foreground. All right. And then what I'm going to do is with him still on this free transform, I'm going to right click and I'm going to flip him horizontal and hit enter. There we go. And I need to, again, I need to take out his background now. So it'd probably be easier for me to paint the horse the inside of the horse, instead of painting the outside. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go back into Quick Mask, zoom in a little, and my brush, and whoops, I'm gonna start to paint this, paint this bad boy. He's gonna go a little bit quicker at least. I'm kind of pay attention to where his hair is. Let me zoom out a little. And do this. Follow the main. Hair is one of the most difficult things, I will say, which you probably know if you did that. Um, the picture of the girl from last week. You know, getting the hair right <laughs> was probably one of the harder things. Right here, grab that one wisp. And to instantly change the size of your brush, it's the bracket tool. So the left bracket next to the P makes it smaller and the right bracket makes it the brush larger. So kind of getting used to that quick key will really help you to work more efficiently. I used to be obsessed in the seventh grade with drawing horses. I don't know why. I've never owned a horse. I don't even think I've ridden a horse. But I was obsessed for a good straight year of, with drawing horses. Me and my friend. We just get in trouble drawing horses every day. Well, we were supposed to be doing something else, clearly, <laughs> during school. <laughs> Thank you. 
I think she had a horse, so it actually made more sense that she was drawing horses. I lived in the city. I did not have a horse. It was not for lack of asking, though. I came up with a great idea when I was really young where I thought we could just put the horse into the garage and, you know, my parents could park their car somewhere else. That, however, you know, just didn't fly. They said no. I just, you know, don't know why. Okay. Right. To make sure that wasn't his body as opposed to the background. It's kind of the same color. And don't forget about all the things that we learned last week, you know, the color correcting, um, you know, cloning things, um, spot healing things, you know, all of those things that can, can be used this week as well to kind of really put these together. You know, I might have to clone some, some grass coming up through where he's laying in the hay right now. Make it realistic. So I'm going to remove the hay because I'm taking out the whole hay background. There we go. Ooh, so much hay. And there's his hoof. Really get in there. It's the little attention to detail is what makes this most believable. Even though, you know, you could have a dog wearing a tiara, you want to kind of make it believable looking. I want to believe that that dog really is wearing that tiara. I think that that was actually part of his leg. I will say though, um, you know, these projects so far that we've had, you know, in this course, I do a lot of demos for all of my classes. And so far, you know, I think that the ones for this class are some of the most fun projects. Um, 
just because I love Photoshop. I love working in Photoshop. So, you know, any time I can spend hours and hours in Photoshop, I really, really enjoy it. So there's definitely some, some really great projects. Like, I don't find these projects to be boring or, you know, have nothing to do with what you might ever do find yourself doing. I mean, granted, you might not find yourself putting a hat on something, but you would be surprised what clients ask you to do. I've been asked to do some really bizarre things. Um, you know, can you change out the hat that I'm wearing in this photo? Can you make it look like it's my hair instead? I've gotten, I didn't get a chance to get my hair dyed before we took these photos. So can you dye my hair for me? I don't like the red shirt I'm wearing. Can you make my shirt blue? Uh, you know, so putting a hat on a dog, I, I've had to put hats on a dog um, for ads that I've done. So definitely, you know, not outside of the realm of possibilities in the, in your career. I've had to put a hat on a dog quite a, quite a few times. It's St. Patrick's Day. Here's a picture of my dog. Can you put a hat on him and have him sitting at the table having a beer? All right. So believe me, you might find uh, yourself having to do that. <laughs> People love to put their dogs and their children in their ads. That is one thing I have learned in my many years of doing advertising. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I selected the inside. I'm going to modify my selection by expanding it to pixels and do an edit fill with the black foreground color and deselect it. Make sure I've gotten it all. Looks pretty good. And I'm gonna leave quick mask mode by hitting Q, or I can just go over here. I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna add a layer mask. So I'm gonna select the layer mask button, whoops. And I gotta select the outside, that's right, because last time I, I painted the outside. So what I needed to do is I need to select the inverse and then hit the quick mask mode. You'll notice it deleted my horse at first. So there he is. It's kind of believable. He's laying in the grass right here. Grass is showing through. Not too bad. I'll make it a little bit more believable towards the end. And I've got some depth going on here. So I can tell that the horse is closest to the foreground. The trees are kind of going off into the distance. And then, you know, I've got my solar system clearly in the distance. So the next thing I'm going to add is I'm going to add some of those planets. Um, just, just because maybe I can find, I don't know if I'll be able to find a unicorn horn. Let me see. I don't know if they have a unicorn on here. That might be pushing it. Oh, here's my horse. <laughs> this goat is definitely not a unicorn. I don't think um, Free Images knows what a unicorn is. Here's one, and here's a unicorn statue. Um, none of these are what I am looking for. Um, let me see if, yeah, it does have that going through. Let me, maybe I can find, I'll show you how to find images on Google that are able to be used that are royalty free. So you're going to go to, you'll just Google something, do images. You want to go to tools, usage right. Labeled for reuse with modification. And size I would need large. And there's a very good chance I am not going to find a good enough unicorn horn. Maybe this. I 
I need to have it going in the same exact direction. Um, oh, these are free images, so that's good. Maybe, uh, maybe I can make this work. Uh, free download, original. I hate these sites. Uh. I'll just sign up. I'm just going to pause while I put in a password. And we'll see if it lets me download. Come on. All right. Congratulations. Where's my where's my unicorn image? <laughs> Let me hide my Zoom. Hold on, there we go. Thank you for registering. Should be logged in still. Ah, oh, there it is. All right. That's actually kind of easy. And here you are. Bring you into Photoshop. And Let's see, I think it'll probably be easier for me to just clip this out of here and then draw, copy it over. So I'm going to do the same exact thing over here. I'm just gonna, oops. Grab just the unicorn horn. And watch it look ridiculous after all this. But we'll see. We'll see if we can make it work. I feel like it wouldn't be a horse. Like, there would definitely be a unicorn on this planet. And it just left out that basically I found another free image website, which is great. So that was, that was stock art as well. Sometimes you come across those when you do a Google search for things that can be used with modification. So select the inside, expand my selection, edit, fill, Deselect. select 
and select the inverse. Tile these. Drag that over. Whoa, that was huge. And close him out. I'm not going to save him. And I'm going to try to nestle his horn in between his ears, maybe, or at least follow the line of his head. I don't really know where a unicorn horn comes from. We'll have to, we'll have to fix that a little. All right, so we've got the unicorn horn. That's going to need some work. I'm going to label that horn. This is my horse. Got my background and I got my celestial background. All right, so next I need to add in those planets and then I can start, you know, really kind of color correcting this thing, making it look like it all goes together. So let's open up my planets. I think it was this one, the Galaxy Nubula. All right, I'm just gonna grab these two planets. I'm not gonna grab the haze that's around them. I'm going to instead, um, well, hmm, let me think. Let me just drag this over. I have an idea. Window, range, tile vertically. Bring me back here. That's kind of fun. Right there. Ooh, I like that. All right. But clearly, you need to be faded out. All right, I'm gonna show you another quick trick. All right, so I haven't selected anything yet, but you can see I, I wanna kinda fade, let me turn off this background for a second. I wanna fade this background into this background. So it kind of gradually goes to this background. I think that that could be kind of cool. Um, I think I'm still gonna need to do a little bit of tweaking with this, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I, and I turned off the other layer because it's easier for me to kind of see what I'm doing. Before I even select anything, I'm first going to add the layer mask, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm on the mask, so in case if I'm not, I'm gonna click over here, and then I'm going to go to my gradient tool, and I wanna make sure that my gradient is set from black to white. I'll hit okay. And I'm going to start right about here, and I'm gonna click, I'm gonna hold down shift, I'm gonna click and drag, Right to the edge of, whoops, wrong way. I'm gonna figure out, right, all right, it's a black way. All right, so I'm gonna start at this end. Sometimes it, it takes me a second. And I'm gonna click and drag a, towards the planet, but I don't wanna go into the planet. And you'll notice how it starts to fade out and fade into this picture. That's kind of cool. And I can, a little bit, uh, a little bit closer. Kind of like that. That's pretty cool. I'll turn the trees back on. I do like that. It looks like it's glowing. That that can be where our light source is coming from. So that's pretty awesome. All right, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave that like that. I kinda like that, that's pretty cool. All right, so I need to deal with my horse and his unicorn horn first. Um, let's deal with the horn first. 
feel like I'm probably going to need to add a mask to him and start to kind of Yeah, no. Go back. Play your mask. Mm. Let me think. How would a horn go? How'd the other horn go? He had hair. We need to erase a little bit of his hair. All right, we can try that. Let's let's try to erase and make hair. I probably have randomly enough a hair brush. Or at one point I did. Oh, grass. That would kind of work. Um. You can find um, Photoshop brushes pretty much anywhere online. Like um, DeviantArt has a lot of Photoshop brushes. That kind of looks a little bit like hair coming up. Let's see, what else do I got? What else do I have going on here? I have other grass. Let's try this one. Which is good that this is showing through, but I need to put something behind this. So I'm going to add a layer and I'm going to drag it underneath my horn and I'm going to color sample this. I'm just going to, with a real brush, not a one of those. Oops. Paint in the background. There we go. because it was starting to clip through right to the sky behind it. And I'm gonna label this behind horn. I'm gonna link these two layers together. That way if I move them, they move together. And I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. It looks a little bit, a little bit more real, I guess. Um, I can try to maybe clone in some actual hair with my clone stamp. Hmm. No, that's weird. Maybe right here. No, the color's not gonna be right. The direction's not gonna be right. All right. I do wanna also address his um, glare right here, and I think I'm gonna try to color correct him to be a little bit darker. So I wanna make a copy of him because I really just wanna correct in here. Um, and it'll kind of be easier for me to do that on the copy. So I'm gonna drag this whole layer on top of the piece of paper, the new, make a new layer, and I'm gonna work off of his, um, work off of his copy. I just wanna kind of, darken him up a little bit, but not really. Let me try doing 
which is going to seem really weird, but a color overlay of kind of this yellow. Do multiply. You need to tweak the color a little bit. No, multiply is definitely the way to go. Um, it doesn't do really that much. All right, so we're gonna do that color overlay. And then I'm going to get rid of it though, by painting over it on the mask. You know, over here, I really just want it in this area. So I'm gonna make my brush really big. I don't want them to be too dark. Hold on, maybe I should have, might leave it right here, all right. Remember, always keep your history brush open. Or your history palette, so you can kind of go back if you change your mind, like I just did. A lot easier. Um. Hmm. Trying to blend that in. Get really close. There we go. Let's try and do it without zooming in, but clearly, gotta zoom myself in here. Uh, I hate that it defaults to this extras thing. Never liked it since it since extras came on the scene. change my hardness all the way down to zero so it gets really fuzzy.
Yeah. Actually, I'm going to go in and darken this up down here, too. Give it a little bit of shadow. So on the copy, I'm going to start to add a little bit to the shadows where he's laying in the grass. So it looks a little bit more like he's laying in the grass. So I'm going to go to the burn tool, which burns in those shadows. Um, I always like to start my exposure really low on the burn tool because it's really easy to get, you know, a little bit carried away right off the bat. Um, I'm going to go in for the shadows first, but I might have to switch it over to mid mid tones cuz we got some white in here Maybe even highlights oh whoops on the wrong thing I was on the I have to go back to the image I'm like this doesn't seem like it's doing it there we go add some depth where he's laying in the grass again makes it just you know a little bit more real again I'm working off the copy and I had to go back into I was on the um, mask before and that's why it wasn't working so I had to make sure I was in the picture Soften up some of those glares. There we go. So it's definitely starting to come along. I would probably keep working with the color of the horse. Um, let me see, let's go to image adjustments. Let's try some color balance. I wanna put like a little bit more yellow into them. Hmm. Oh, I know why. Probably. I have to colorize this version of it. Let's try that again. Nilu. A little bit more magenta. Give them a little bit of an kind of an orangier glow. My yellow is so I got negative 22, negative 33, because I'm gonna need to match that. Negative 22, negative 33. All right, edit image. <laughs> There we go. So these two copies match because you'll notice I, you know, have that mask, a couple of masks going on here. So I'm going to name this horse highlights because <laughs> that's pretty much all that's in that mask is the horse highlights. I feel like that kind of 
gives him a little bit kind of matches his um his horn now too making his horn a little bit more realistic <laughs> And what else can I do? I really don't like the lack of detail right here. I think I might, hmm, maybe on, maybe on this one, I might try to, to clone in some of his just skin. The clone stamp, mm, we'll see. I'm gonna do, try it at 50% opacity first. Just to, I'm gonna get rid of that glare. Hmm. Oops. A little dark. A little bit better, a little filling in. So again, don't forget what you've, you know, the the things that you did last week, you know, um, color correcting and using the clone stamp and the blemish tool and, you know, things like that, uh, you know, that's really going to help. Like, let me... I need to do it on this guy. Real some of these marks. I would also definitely go in and clean this up better. So once you're done, you know, save and save often, definitely. Um, but save that PSD file and upload the PSD file to the submission box. So I can see each of your layers. I can figure out that you put the layer masks on and that you followed what you needed to do. Um, before we end tonight, are there any questions? Is there anything you would like me to go over in a little bit more detail before we end tonight? You do have a question? Okay. 
Hi, Shannon. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, I'm okay. Um, I'm confused with all three things in the assignment. I'm like super confused on how you want everything. I mean, I've wa I watched the whole entire thing. I'm still confused. Okay. Do you mean the instructions on the assignment or how to like submit it? No, the instructions. Oh, okay. Let's go. All right. So basically you need to have four things in it. And it needs to be a photo of an animal, a photo of a hat, you know, a crown or a headpiece that you would, I'm assuming, put on top of your animal. Okay. Um, and then a photo of a prop. So it can be any type of prop, like, um, you know, maybe like a laptop and your dog is wearing a monocle or maybe your dog's wearing a monocle reading a book and the book is the prop. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and then a background. So find all four of those images and then you're going to composite them together just like I was just doing um, to kind of just make a clever photo. Okay. And then upload instead of uploading the jpeg you would upload that psd file to me okay so this time it's a psd not a jpeg right right mm -hmm. um it's just so that way i can see that you've you know done the the masks and you know the the different things i can see kind of how you put your uh, your image together it's easier for me to see that with the PSD file than it is for me to see the flat, the flattened JPEG. So that's why I'd like to see the PSD files because at least then if I'm saying, Oh, you know, what about this piece? And you're like, Oh, well that actually, I didn't even Photoshop that that was in the image. It, it's, it's just easier for me to see that. Okay. Um, so does that make a little bit more sense? Yeah, it does. It's just with all four of them. It's like, confusing well i mean it's supposed to be just kind of fun like you know like they said like you could have a camel that's wearing a hat and carrying a briefcase you know and then the the background is maybe not the desert maybe it's you know an office setting okay that makes more sense you know it's supposed to be like it's completely out of the norm <laughs> I guess, right. you know, like, yeah, like the camel's wearing a hat and carrying a briefcase, and instead of being in the desert, he's in a cubicle, like, like sticking his head up out of a cubicle, and you're like, well, that clearly did not. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, so that's kind of like where you should be going with this, basically. Okay. All right. Um, did you have any other questions? No, that was it. It was just, because like I said, I was following along and it's like, wait, all four things. And then, yeah, I just got really confused on all of it. All right. Yeah. I would say, you know, first I was, my, um, my tip is when you're finding the four photos, Try to find four photos that seem to have similar lighting. You know what I mean? Like, so that way, and you can kind of tell when you look at all four of them, like, next to each other, you can say, oh, you know what? The lighting on this one is completely off, and it's going to be such a pain for me to try to Photoshop that lighting correctly. Let me see if I can find another picture of a different dog. Or let me see if I can find another office setting. You know, so try to, you know, try to remove as many obstacles as you can. You know, like my horse, I figured out that if I just flip my horse, the light was going in the same direction. I, that was a, I, I knew I'd be able to do that when I picked this photo. Like, that was one of the things I looked at. I was like, all right, so the light's hitting these trees. I need to find something where the light's hitting the same area, and it doesn't look like there's a light up here that's only hitting the top of his head, you know? Right. Because then I would have to sit here and try to, like, 
Photoshop in all of this lighting where I knew I could just flip the horse and then they kind of had the same light source coming in at the same direction. The blue on those on that tree actually makes that picture. Yeah, it kind of does because of the blue of I think this. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, that in the in the very background. Yeah. It it kind of does. It it kind of does. It's it's kind of funny, because normally I would go in there and really take it out, but I almost feel like it kind of works. It does work. <laughs> it liter no. It it literally does work, and it's like, you know, after, you know, seeing that and everything, and then seeing the the after picture, I'm like and she wants to take that blue out no the blue needs to stay. <laughs> yeah yeah and and you know what and like you're gonna have like ideas while you're going and then you're gonna go oh wait a minute like you know my original thought was to clip out this whole background but i figured fading these two together i was like actually that's kind of cool so let me try this like on the fly you know i mean it, it, things kind of happen fluidly when you're in photoshop <laughs> Oh, most definitely. And it's like, um, for the wording on that cat, on that cat photo, I tried to, uh, highlight it, you know, where I have, uh, cute kitty, whatever, purr, purr, purr. I'm still trying to figure out how to highlight that and change it. Okay. Well I'm really having difficulty with that. Okay. Are you going to come to the multi-session tomorrow? Yeah, I, 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 I can. That's not a problem. Okay. Because well, I can take a look at it on your screen tomorrow if you want, and I can probably offer you some suggestions. Okay. Because I, I, like, I'm, I'm split, like, as you know, I'm new to this. So it's like, I, I'm slowly, you know, learning the different tools. Right. And it's just trying to, you know, grab it and, and, and highlight that saying to change that, you know, to make that, that saying darker. I, I literally can't for the life of me figure out how to do that. No problem. Yeah. We'll take a look at it tomorrow and I can, I can definitely offer you some suggestions. It'll probably be easier if I, you know, to do it then, cause I can kind of show you and walk you through it, through it on, your, right. on your machine so that way you'll you'll be able to see the process and do the process this is like with the with the other cat i didn't mean to make her so blurry but i tried my like with her i tried my best mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's like i did too much and then i made her really blurry and then I took some away, and then she seemed fine. Yeah, we can. The other one, the black and white cat. Yeah, yeah, we can take a look at that too. So it's like I, you know, because um, DJ helped me with the cat. Actually, she helped me. Well, she did. She gave me suggestions for the 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 one with I have the you know the the the, the saying on it. Yep. She gave me suggestions and, you know, the, the, the other kitty cat, the black and white one, you know, she, her and I worked on that one for quite a while for, you know, for the assignment. And it was like, um, you know, it, it, it was like, uh, it was hard on both of us. To try, that, you know, yeah, those are the, the, that one and the the kids sitting in the grass. Those are two difficult photos. You know, I mean, they definitely they definitely are. So, um, I mean, you got to give me credit though. I did. Oh, yeah. I did try with you know the black and white cat. Oh yeah. Oh, I definitely could tell, and I can. Um, again, we can take a look, and I can kind of. Um, what I could probably do is just kind of like do a demo starting from the beginning. And if you want to watch that tomorrow, it can give you a little bit of, um, you know, suggestions on what to do. Cause like I didn't touch her eye or anything. And it's like the way that she's that like laying, like you can see the one eye, but you can't see the other. Right. 
and I didn't even touch her eye. And it came out sort of blurry along like where, you know, the, the, her one, her left ear, you know, I have that glob of white at, and I didn't want it like that, but I real, if, if I kept, you know, taking away, Right. I would have been screwing up the picture. Right, right, yeah. No, well, so definitely. That's why I handed that in the way I did because I didn't know what else to do. You know what I mean? Yep. I knew I wasn't going to get a really good grade on that, but yet I didn't know literally what to do because, yes, I picked a hard photo. But, you know, I literally tried. Oh, yeah. To no, do we can, what needed to be done, but everything that, that I was trying to do was making her worse. Yeah, sometimes it's it's. Yeah, I know ex I know exactly what you mean. So what we can do is we could just kind of take a look at that um, tomorrow, and we'll we'll take a look at that photo together, and I'll just kind of show you what I would do in that mm -hmm. situation, and maybe it'll give you a couple of ideas. Right, um, and that that might help in a minute yeah, because help like i i realized like on that girl um because misty uh sort of helped me with it because i i i tried my you know it's like i tried to do what you wanted me to with her yep. and it wasn't working and i emailed misty who is my da and I got, or AD, and I got a hold of her, and she helped me with that. Well, we did, I, her nor I seen the black spots on that picture until you mentioned it. And then that's when I went in and got rid of those black spots. And I tried to, you know, smooth out her forehead like you wanted me to. And it was just taking away the definition of her forehead. Yeah, that's a, that's a, it's very, yeah, I can show you a couple of tricks with that too. So it was like, you know, excuse my language, a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation with all three of those photos, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, and that's where, you know, yeah, that's where kind of like just when you get more familiar with the different tools, it will get easier. It, it'll get easier because you'll go, oh, I know I need to use this tool to do this. And when, when you're just starting out, you don't know that yet. So right. it's it's all trial and error at this point. So don't, like, you know, don't get tried. frustrated by the trial and error. That's the, that's the only way you learn in Photoshop. Oh, most definitely. And it's like, I have tried, you know, almost all of it you know, all the tools and it's like trying to, you know, figure out and remember what tools you, you know, that you are supposed to do, yeah. supposed to use. And it's really hard to remember. It is. It, it, it's because it's all new. It's, it's definitely because of that. Um, but yeah, we'll take a look. We'll take a look at both of those tomorrow. That can be, uh, that can be on our agenda. Okay. So four o'clock, your time, time, which, well, no, four o'clock mountain time, which is what, six o'clock our time. Yes. Your East Coast. Yes. Yeah. You yes. guys know? We got some. Not enough to go sledding, though. My mom did. My mom got a lot where she is. But um, I, we were supposed to get. You got a small dusting. Yeah, we got maybe like an inch and then it turned to slush. Ugh. Yeah, boo. <laughs> yeah, it, it, we got a small dressing, and then we were under a winter storm advisory. Yeah, we were too. Oh, my boyfriend just said we're still under this winter storm advisory. 